Alright, what's up guys? Uh, so I'm not going to waste no more time. We're going to do basically my mixing and mastering vocal chain. I'm going to play the song for you so you can see it, get a feeling what it sounds like. And this is radio quality. I'm play a little bit of the verse so you can hear. That she love herself to court. Try to smooth, she got a setup. She rocking herself right. While rocking that off white. Yeah, baby, just my type. Shotty cooler than a fan. Little baby be all hype. We higher than most heights. She down to catch all flights. Shotty smooth, she got a setup. She rocking. Alright, you get the picture. Uh sounds pretty good. So first thing I did before recording, uh that's most important. <clears throat> By the way, the mic I used for this recording was Neumann TLM-103, uh, Interface Apollo Twin X Duo, uh, Thunderbolt, so Thunderbolt 3. This is, so first thing I do before recording, this is just a beat that uh, he probably purchased off YouTube. Artist is uh, Groovy Main, uh, and I'll put a link to the song, uh, or his profile in the description. So first thing I do is I turn the beat down around 10 dB. And you'll see if I solo this. Turn this off. Turn the mastering off. So your average, you want your average mixed volume before recording to be, or me before mixing, probably around negative 10. So I turn the beat down negative 10 dB usually before I start recording vocals and then it just helps so much with your mixing with leveling later on and your average volume is perfect for mastering um so what i'm gonna do first so i don't fuck anything up on this file let's do a save as rosemary edit for youtube all right so now it's a we can fuck around with this and it won't matter <clears throat> all right so next thing i did is i took all these vocals right here and I put it straight to a bus, which is bus 10, which you can see is right here. And I labeled this, uh, I usually name it Vox Edit. So let's do that right there, bam. And then next, all those routed vocals, except for my main vocal, I basically just put a little gate on here. Uh, I'll show you the settings for the gate. This is just a stock plugin. I just kept the only knob I adjusted is this threshold down to negative 70. Default is negative 50. So, and that's all I did for that. Um, so, let's go ahead and we're going to start off with everything off. So, I'm going to go turn everything off here. I'm going to make this a fast video. Uh, we'll keep the gate on because all that's doing is just preventing noises from a certain dB level from getting into the mix. And so, those are just on the background vocals. So, we'll just keep it on. So let's hear it raw. There's nothing on it. I might actually have to turn this up a little bit for you guys. So it doesn't sound bad. Vocals sound pretty good. So that's completely raw right there. <clears throat> So the reason why we route it to a bus is just so we don't have to put editing on every track and then we route it to a stereo bus right here. Uh, and we just put that, all the editing on one track. So the first thing I like to do in my chain is an NLS channel strip plugin. This just emulates expensive console gear. Uh, and you'll see I put the drive usually at six. That's only not my touch and we'll play it out. So, before, after, so it just adds a little bit of flavor, a little bit of character to the mix. 
Next thing I do is put a pitch correction plug in. Um, this mix is an A minor. If you don't know how to do that, you can download this plugin key or this application key finder. Just drag your beat in there. It'll tell you the it's free and it'll tell you the key right away. Uh, response time 89. I didn't do any detune. Always do low if it's a male vocal. All right, next. Next thing I did was the EQ. <clears throat> and this is all I did on my EQ. We just roll off around 88 hertz on this mix. I usually do around 100 hertz, 88 hertz, 60 to 100 hertz, depends. Before, after. So just cleans up that low end. Next thing I did was many triple Ds. Um, so what I usually do is I'll go here, solo the bus. I'll take this. And I'll just adjust it till it's compressing a little bit. And you can hear the before and after. So we're probably cleaning up around that 250 hertz. Instead of using an EQ, we're just compressing that low end out of there instead. So you can see it does a big deal. On solo, very subtle, very subtle. Next in the mix, Renaissance de <clears throat> So we're not we're not actually using the deesser in this one to tame uh, the s's. We're using it to tame the harshness frequency of 4k. 4k is known as a pain frequency, and we're just doing like attenuation to that frequency. <clears throat> so very light, like peaking at negative six, but it's averaging like negative three attenuation. So that's good. And before and after, let's hear in the mix. You can feel the life come into the mix. The parts that we want of the vocal to stand out are now standing out. <clears throat> so now that we basically carved out the things that we don't like about the vocal, using an EQ, compression, and uh, uh, more compression with the de -esser. We're gonna put some actual compressors on there to enhance the vocal. First one I use is CLA 2A. <coughs> I did around negative 5 dB of compression. Uh, you adjust the peak reduction knob on the right here to determine the compression. And then you just adjust the gain to taste that you feel the volume is good in the mix. So I'll go ahead and show you that before and after so I'm not doing any more than negative 6 dB of compression on my first compressor um, so next compressor I use is H compressor so we have a 4 dB ratio 100% wet medium release of 100 and a 7.0 attack <clears throat> and we're doing probably like 2 db of compression consistent and we kept the analog and we kept the analog on for this one you can hear before and after So you're, you're trying to listen for the attitude to come out of the vocal. You'll notice the more that you track this threshold back, the more attitude comes back in the voice. Uh, let's do that so I can show you. So you can definitely hear before and after. Let's listen. Oh, 
Okay. And then also on the output, I reduce this down one dB. I thought it was too loud. So sometimes perceivedness, perceived loudness will go up because it's a compressor. Next plugin I did was Pug Tech EQ. <clears throat> and I'll turn this off for now. Uh, basically what I did is I just rolled off 1.9 dB of 30 hertz and I boosted well I'm sorry not 1.9 but setting setting 1.9 and setting 10 of 12k this is not necessarily in dB that's just setting 10 on this knob so I'll show you what it does so the real magic knob is right here and I tend to use the attenuation knob to kind of get an even or evener tone. So let's, I'll drag this back for now so you can hear. So we boost this up. So I think it sounds good there and we just use this to reduce a little bit of the low end. So that's next. Obviously big difference. Let's hear before and after. So it just carves, it just changes the vocal up completely. Since we just boosted the highs dramatically, we now have to add a de -esser to tame those S's. So that's next in chain. So I just go here and I load up male S preset. <clears throat> and I'll just drag this down. I'll try not to do more than negative six. And you might come back later and you might adjust that more. So you never know, depending on how much the S's are being boosted. And last in the chain for directly on the track, I just put a Abbey Road's play reverb. I'm gonna go ahead and reset this to default so you can see how crazy this sounds. So what I do is I like to find a plate that I like. Like that sounds good. So I'll go through it. And then what I'll do is I'll put the pre-delay probably like 10 to 15. So I'll do 13 for this one. The formula to find the pre-perfect pre-delay is 60,000 divided by the BPM of your song, then divided by two until you get a number within the 30, 15 to 30 MS range. But then we'll actually take this cool dry slash wet knob and blend it in with the vocal. So let's do that. I usually do like anywhere between 4% to 15%. Uh, I usually don't go over 15%. And uh, that's usually like my sweet spot. You can also do a bass cut uh, depending if you want. I, don't, I like it better without no bass cut in it. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much all I do. And then next thing we're going to do is parallel compression. So what you basically do is you set up a bus, a stereo bus. So I just go here, bus, bus 11. Okay, and then you put the input all the way up on the send. So it's full riding on the send. Make sure it's in pre-fader mode. Okay. Has to be in pre-fader mode. Then I'll take the fader of that send that it creates right here. And we'll name that parallel compression PC. 
And the first uh, item in this parallel compression chain that I'll do is a PugTech EQP1. Uh, I'll reduce around six, up to six of the 100 hertz frequency attenuation. I'll take the 16 hertz and I'll boost that up around six. And I'll attenuate it a little bit, like 1.5. Yep. And then I'll make that EQ run straight into a compressor. We'll play it out. Most important thing is the all ratio that's making it 50 to 1 dB ratio. Medium release on this one. Uh, faster attack. 7 is the fastest setting on this uh, compressor. 1 is slowest. And then I'm doing quite a bit around negative 10 dB of... Yeah, around around negative 10 dB of compression. So that's a good amount. Uh, I'll do around negative 10 to 20, depending on what kind of effect you're going for. And then uh, right after that, I'll put another PugTech EQP1A. And in this one, I attenuate more of the 100 hertz frequency just by 2.3. And then I added in a little bit of clarity of the 8K frequency, boosting it 3.0. And then since we're boosting and cutting and and parallel compressing so intensely, I actually add a little bit of saturation on the top end of the vocal. Uh, it, I mean, not on the top end, but it helps even out the top end of the vocal. I'll put 100% of a setting on using isotope nectar 3 and just mix it in 4% at the end of the chain. So let's hear what it sounds like when I actually bring this fader in to mix it in. So you can see it it just made the vocal pop way more uh just brought it out it made it more present but not necessarily too much louder in volume let's hear it before and after the feeling you can almost describe it as like you didn't know your vocal was that weak until you put this on like it just strengthened it made it feel alive more present more energy everything before and after again. All right, next, all I did on this next one, very simple, regular scent, stereo send. I put on the H delay. All I did was go here, preset ping pong, and that's it. Uh, didn't put make sure to lower the analog off because you just already have so much other analog sounds from your compressors etc you don't need this in there uh, kept everything the same didn't touch it and then I just put a little bit of a compressor at the end of it Rvox compressing on 1.3 and a little bit attenuation just to make the delay more present in the mix just a little bit and I just mixed this in so just to, I mixed it in until I felt it created a sense of space. So, that sounds good. <clears throat> Next plugin is very good. It's my go-to. I'd use this on every plugin. This is now starting in the mastering chain. I'm completely done with mix mixing at this point. So I move on to mastering. First thing in the chain I use is Greg Wells Mix Centric. Very amazing plugin. <coughs> oh, something happened. <coughs> Sorry, my throat is extremely itchy. Apologize for that. <coughs> but uh let's do a full reset. And I just use this preset called Buckle In and we'll see how it sounds like. So 
So that shit just made it insane. Let's hear before and after. So there's so much things going on behind the scenes, but it just that just made it feel more alive. Did so much processing, but just by turning one knob. And normally, if your volume goes too high, you want to adjust this output knob down uh, in volume. But in this case, we gained stage so well that our mix is not even clipping, so we don't really need to do that. Next in the chain I did was SSL compressor. So yeah, literally all I do with this guy, I'll show you. Oops, so I'll just come here. So yeah, I just come here, SSL compressor. So it loads up like this in this setting right here. And I'll put the attack all the way all the way slow and the release all the way fast and it's, it makes it sound way bigger you'll hear i do this on every mix at a four ratio usually and it's doing very slight compression which is exactly what we want we don't want anything major at all but see how much bigger this sounds before and after You can hear the energy, lots more movement coming in that you didn't even know wasn't there. Very good compressor. They call it the good button. Next, all I do is throw on the Ozone 8. Uh, first thing I'll do is I'll actually just run the mastering assistant. But let me just save this as a preset so I have it. Uh, Rose Mary. That way we know. Okay. So yeah, first thing I'll do is I'll just run the mastering assistant. Super fly, super fly. Make sure to run the rap mastering assistant on the loudest part of your track. Alright, you'll usually end up with something like this. Uh, I usually just X out whatever it doesn't need. So, one, you'll usually end up with three modules like this, and I'll show you what you are going to add to those three modules. So, these are the three modules. Or, I mean, we took out one, obviously, but or these are the three modules that you end up with. Maximizer, Dynamic, EQ, and Equalizer. Um... So what you're going to do first off is add an imager to the front. I usually spread out these. I start off with this band right here. And I usually just drag this down till it feels wide enough. So let's see here. We'll put that on. Make sure to click stereo eyes. So you're listening for the low end to become more present. So I think it sounds good there. And you always match the fourth band to this band to link them together because you don't want to cause phase issues. Next, you bring this up until you feel the mid range become more present, the body of the vocal. And you don't want to push this too far, then it'll sound almost further away. So you gotta be careful. But this is clarity in the vocal. You don't want to drag this too far either. Very usually you put this under band too. So 
So I like that balance between all of them. Next thing I do is I'll add a vintage EQ and I'll literally just go here and I'll just go to the preset general enhancement. And in this case, all I did was I raised this up 0.5 to 3.5. So let's listen. Super fly, super fly, super cool like Rosemary. I got what you need, baby. I got what you need, baby. Super fly. Super so it just makes it more crisp, more tighter, more cleaner. Next, I came to Vintage Tape. I just selected the speed 7.5. I usually listen to whichever one just sounds best to me by preference, honestly. And I'll raise it around 2.4 on the input drive. So you hear that? I usually put bias 0.1 or 0.2. I just do use it slightly just until I feel like the vocal sits properly above the bass. Everything you want to do is to mix towards the vocal. And I just add a slight harmonics. This is very this is like saturation, so you don't really want to add too much. It'll, it could mess mess up your whole mix. Now right into that, I run the maximizer and they usually put the preset uh, already for me in what the mastering assistant, which is nice. I'll take a metering knob here or a metering plug-in at the end, multimeter. And I'll measure the RMS volume and make sure I'm at negative 10 or negative 8. And I'll just drag the maximum the threshold down until I reach that point. So we're already radio quality volume, so we're good. We don't need to change anything. Um, and you can experiment with different sounds of different modes, but I usually just go with what the master assistant picks. Next, make sure to turn on dithering. You can filter DC offset by clicking this filter button. And I'll just get rid of any DC offset while that was done while recording. I usually just keep it on the default mode high for noise shaping, the their amount medium, and make sure you always put bit to F24 to make the highest quality possible. Uh, but that's it for the mastering. So we'll go ahead and uh, Let's play the mix out a little bit. So fire sounds radio quality. Uh, let me talk about the vocals a little bit. Punches, just emphasizing the last sentences of each word. I'd make them do the two takes of those and I pan it hard left and right. All this gets routed to the same vocal bus and I'll mix the volume in. Uh, dubs. And yeah, that's about that's about the only unique thing I do. And obviously record as much vocals as you want. You can always mix it in the volume to taste for tonality or effect. But thank you guys. Hope you enjoyed. I'll play the mix out a little bit. And uh, please subscribe and comment if you have any questions. I'll try and get back to you. Thank you. Mama Green, got a swag that's super vicious in the body. I adore Shotty all about a business. She get down in that Dior. Where you dripping, got them tripping. Making bodies hit the floor. Making money on the mission. Says she love herself to court. Shotty's